Hey guys, on to lesson three, condensers. They're not quite as glamorous as the evaporators with all their tricky defrost going on, but we need to go over them nonetheless. So we'll take a look and describe the functions of a condenser. Uh, we'll explain how a condenser operates. We'll describe condensing temperature and condenser split, which is similar to the TD measurement that we do on the evaporators. We'll talk about air-cooled and water-cooled condensers and then we'll take a look at low ambient controls how they operate and why they're necessary for uh, refrigeration and then we'll go over a little bit of condenser troubleshooting and maintenance procedures we'll get into the full refrigeration circuit troubleshooting in a, in a later lesson all right so the condenser of course rejects the heat absorbed by the evaporator it's kind of the reverse process of the evaporator so when we get into the condensing side of the circuit, the first part is desuperheating. And what that does, it will reduce the discharge gas from the, the uh, compressor. Well, it will reduce the temperature. That's the sensible heat. Then it condenses from vapor to liquid, which is a latent heat removal. And that's where most of the heat is rejected. In fact, that is about 99% of where the heat is rejected. And then subcooling, which is sensible heat, and that cools the refrigerant down below its um, condensing level and below its saturation point. So we have a air-cooled condenser walk-in system, R22, box temperature is 35 degrees, ambient temperature is 95. We have a 175 degree discharge temperature with 280 PSI G discharge pressure. If you look at your uh, PT chart or your gauges, you'll see that 280 PSI G equates to 125 degree condensing temperature. So we, we leave the compressor with superheated vapor. It gets desuperheated at this point. Once it starts to condense at the beginning of the coil, it's it's mostly vapor it's starting to condense down into liquid as it moves through the coil it condenses more and more down to liquid till it hits a certain point in the condenser coil and we have fully condensed liquid liquid still at 125 degrees our subcooling begins and it is removing sensible heat which is heat that can be measured and at this point the subcooled liquid as it enters the receiver is 115 degrees and that makes sure that we have a makes sure that we have a solid column of liquid hitting our um, metering device here on the evaporator okay so that is the end of the lesson quick overview of what we're going to learn and our next lesson we'll talk about subcooling and why that's important